In the dark corners of Philadelphia's history, the name Byberry Mental Hospital echoes with a chilling resonance. This institution, officially known as the Philadelphia State Hospital, began as a working farm in the early 20th century, yet rapidly morphed into a multi-building campus. The hospital, however, is not remembered for its scale, but rather for its spine-tingling tales of abuse and neglect. Stories of patients left unbathed and naked, restrained for months on end, and even dying due to neglect paint, a horrifying picture. What started as a beacon of hope for the mentally ill became a house of horrors that still sends shivers down our spines. In 1903, Byberry began as a humble working farm, a sanctuary for the mentally ill. Its inception was rooted in a noble cause, providing a therapeutic environment for those society often overlooked. But as the years unfolded, so too did the true nature of this seemingly benign establishment. The hospital quickly grew from its modest roots, blossoming into a sprawling, multi-building campus. But this growth was not without its ramifications. As the hospital expanded, its staff numbers stagnated. This catastrophic imbalance led to a severe understaffing issue that would have profound effects on the patients it aimed to serve. As the hospital's walls stretched wider, the care for its patients began to thin. Those who were supposed to be nurtured and cared for were left to languish in their own filth, often unbathed and unclothed. The very basic human dignities were stripped away, leaving behind hollow shells of individuals who were once vibrant and full of life. Neglect ran rampant within the hospital's confines. Patients were left in restraints for months on end, their cries for help echoing off the cold, sterile walls. The hospital, once a sanctuary, became a prison, a place where the most vulnerable were forgotten, left to the mercy of time in their own deteriorating minds. And as the understaffing issue worsened, so too did the quality of care. Housekeeping fell behind and the hospital's once pristine environment was reduced to a breeding ground for filth and disease. The hospital's rapid expansion was a double-edged sword, leading to a decline in patient care and the onset of a horrifying era. The hospital's evolution into a multi-building campus was a testament to its growth. But this growth came at a terrible cost. The hospital's original mission, to provide a sanctuary for the mentally ill, was lost in its pursuit of expansion. The hospital's rapid expansion was a double-edged sword, leading to a decline in patient care and the onset of a horrifying era. The dawn of this era marked the beginning of a long, dark chapter in the history of Byberry Mental Hospital, a chapter that would be filled with neglect, abuse, and a horrifying disregard for human life. Understaffing was a mere tip of the iceberg. The true horrors lay far beneath the surface. In the eerie confines of Byberry Mental Hospital, Neglect was a commonality, a chilling normalcy that surpassed the boundaries of human decency. Patients, stripped of their dignity, were left unbathed and naked, their cries for help echoing through the grim, forsaken corridors. The staff, overwhelmed and desensitized, turned a blind eye to the suffering, their actions, or rather inaction, a testament to the hospital's grim reality. But the torment didn't end there. Imagine being trapped in your own body, bound by restraints, your every movement hampered for months on end. This was the cruel fate meted out to the patients of Byberry. Shackled like animals, they were left to wallow in their own despair, their pleas for mercy falling on deaf ears. The consequences of such neglect were as horrifying as they were predictable. Death, an unwelcome visitor, became a frequent guest at Byberry. By the year 1970, at least 57 lives had been snuffed out, casualties of absolute disregard for human life. And these were just the ones we know of. The actual figure? Only the forsaken halls of Byberry hold the answer. This cycle of neglect and death was a damning indictment of the hospital's operations. Each passing day, each life lost was a glaring reminder of the inhumanity that had taken root within Byberry's walls. But amidst the despair, one question lingered. How could such atrocities be allowed to continue unabated? The answer, however, was buried deep within the twisted labyrinth of Byberry's administrative failures and societal apathy. Humane treatment was a forgotten concept within the walls of Byberry, replaced by an escalating cycle of neglect and death. This was the dark side of Byberry Mental Hospital, a side that remained shrouded in shadows, its horrors echoing in the silent screams of its forgotten victims. The horrors of Byberry were not limited to neglect. The institution hit a far more sinister reality. Beneath the surface of squalor and neglect, 
a darker abyss opened its jaws. The monstrous actions of the very people entrusted with the care of the mentally ill. The staff of Byberry, the supposed caregivers, were the perpetrators of unspeakable cruelties. Beatings were not uncommon. The weak, the defenseless, the vulnerable, subjected to physical violence, their cries echoing through the grimy halls. But the physical abuse was just the tip of the iceberg. Medical procedures, often necessary for the well-being of the patients, were performed without the mercy of painkillers. Imagine the terror, the agony, the sheer inhumanity of it all. It is a reality almost too horrific to comprehend. As the patients writhed and screamed in torment, the staff stood by, their humanity forgotten or simply cast aside. Even darker were the dangerous drug trials conducted within the bleak walls of Byberry. The hospital had become a playground for reckless experimentation. Hundreds of patients were used as guinea pigs, subjected to drugs whose effects were unknown, untested. Their bodies became the testing grounds, their minds the battlegrounds. The results were tragic and fatal. Hundreds lost their lives, their sacrifice a testament to the monstrous deeds that took place within Byberry. The hospital, a place of healing, was transformed into a house of horrors. The staff, the supposed carers, became the tormentors. The patients, the helpless victims, were subjected to a nightmare that seemed never-ending. The sanctity of life and dignity was lost to the cold corridors of Byberry, drowned under the screams of the helpless. Despite the atrocities, Byberry continued its operations, its grim secrets hidden behind closed doors. In the face of undeniable evidence of inhumanity, Byberry, the Philadelphia State Hospital, persisted. The world outside remained largely unaware of the chilling reality behind its walls. The hospital, once a working farm, had transformed into a house of horrors where the forgotten were left to languish in desolation. Reports emerged, photographs surfaced, but the hospital's doors remained open. The cries for justice were drowned in the cacophony of bureaucratic apathy and societal indifference. The hospital was a testament to humanity's darkest failings, a monument to our collective neglect. Yet, as the decades rolled on, the whispers of Byberry's horrors grew louder. The voices that were once hushed became a roar that couldn't be ignored. The photographs, once dismissed as fabrications, now served as undeniable proof of the atrocities committed within Byberry's walls. The hospital, which had been a symbol of fear and despair, was finally shut down in the 1990s. Its buildings were left to decay, a haunting reminder of the past. The patients were moved, the staff disbanded, and the once bustling institution fell into silence. But the closure of Byberry was not the end of its story. The hospital may have been shut down, but its legacy lives on. The echoes of the pain and suffering endured by its patients still linger, a chilling reminder of humanity's capacity for cruelty. The stories of Byberry serve as a stark warning, a reminder to treat the vulnerable with compassion and respect to ensure that such atrocities are never repeated. Byberry's doors may have closed, but the echoes of its dark past still resonate in the silence. The tale of Byberry Mental Hospital is a chilling reminder of the depths humanity can sink to. Born out of a well-intentioned idea in the early 20th century, this working farm transformed into a multi-building campus, a place where the unthinkable became the norm. The hospital, known for its inhumane conditions and patient abuse, is a testament to the horrors that can unfold when human lives are reduced to mere numbers. The understaffing led to a lack of basic human decency. Patients were left unbathed and naked, their dignity stripped away as easily as their clothing. The suffering did not stop at neglect. The hospital became a breeding ground for abuse. Staff members, the very people tasked with caring for these vulnerable individuals, used restraints not as a last resort, but as a convenience. Months would pass with patients chained like animals, their cries for help echoing in the cold, sterile hallways. The terror escalated as dangerous drug trials were conducted, snuffing out hundreds of lives in the name of science. The hospital's walls became a silent witness to countless acts of violence, from staff members inflicting pain without remorse to patients turning on each other in desperation. Byberry remained operational for almost nine decades, its dark secrets only coming to light through reports and photographs that exposed the gruesome reality. The hospital finally closed its doors, but the echoes of its past still resonate, a chilling reminder of the horrors that unfolded within its walls. The legacy of Byberry is a stark reminder of our past, a chilling tale that continues to haunt us lurking in the shadows of our collective consciousness.